very avid book reader, and I'm just happy that I'm able to share my love of books with everyone else who is here, as well as support some of the independent authors that I have the pleasure of meeting and developing relationships with. Um, we're going to start the evening off with Justin Morgan uh, with this reading, but first I want to remind everyone that we have two separate raffles going on. We have a 50-50 raffle, as well as a gift basket giveaway with the Juneteenth team. We have a couple books, a book card, a book card, a gift card, as well as um, some beauty products, a candle, things like that, and um, you know, supporting black businesses with the Juneteenth theme. So if you want to participate, you can see myself, my husband, or my aunt, and um, you can purchase tickets one for a dollar or four for five dollars. Five for four dollars. Never mind, don't worry about it. I said that right, right? Nope. No? Go ahead. No. You know what I mean. I'm sorry. Five for four dollars. Yes, that's what it is. I, I said it back. I'm nervous. But um, without further ado, go ahead, Justin. Oh, first tell us a little bit about yourself. All right. Good evening. Thank you all for having me today. Welcome to 313. I got 313 jeans on in 313. In the 313, so let's give a hand clap for yourself. <laughs> yeah. It's a beautiful thing to support black businesses. Me and my partners, we black businesses as well. My name is Justin Gordon, and I'm a poet. I'm, I'm an artist. I just recently graduated from the University of Michigan. And, they, they, and I use my gifts and my art uh, as far as for reading and writing, as far as storytelling, to revolutionize education. And so I know that the baseline and the foundation of education is reading and writing. And so that's what inspired me to write my book. That's what continue to inspire me to drop films, drop plays, and continue to come out to my community and put my hands dirty to it. So without further ado, it's like this. The people and cops in the same goddamn blocks, but they view each other as an ops. Realize institution, the one that is fooling, then all the school shooting to stop. We hating each other, not sister or brother. Forget them, don't care if you starving. We all come together, that will get better. That's why they kill Malcolm and Martin. Massages, drugs, violence, all in the music, they influence. Got our young queen twerking on the snap. Drunk, fooling, white folks, profit, most, but the prison yard, we ruling. Know the worst of me goes, but skip Spanish class in schooling. I was the only brother in my class. I went the city when I passed. Show me boobies, no, that's average. That's the wealthy girl, show me a mad trick. Yeah, that way. I used to call collect all day. Yeah, that way. I seen fiends of being the hallway. Yeah, that way. They throw me in jail for my skin paint. Yeah, that way. The court suck you drop for your cash, man. Look, they show us rapper athlete money just to tease us. I done seen more EBTs and visas. Black people push the culture, U.S. need us. We pull our money together to catch a seizure. Mm. They show us rapper athlete money just to tease us. I done seen more EBTs and visas. Mm. Black people push the culture, U.S. need us. We pull our money together, they'll catch a seizure. I only spent three months in jail, dog. Still got nightmares with that tail, yo. How in the world a judge gonna ever give a sentence if she didn't never have to sit in it? Uh, mm. Uh, uh, mm. I did my time and came back home. Now I'm in row. HRC a felony and say no. To get a job with a criminal record is the hardest. It's like you still locked up after the boys lift. Look, Detroit been down so long it looked like up to me. Gotta make it up to me. The storm glorifying prison just got us buzzed. The ironies in our face. The ironies in our face. I say Detroit been down so long it looked like up to me. God make it up to me. The song glorifying prison just got us buzzed. The ironies in our face. Mm. 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 Now, for our feature author, <laughs> this is how this event all came about. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna let her tell y'all. Okay, so she already started the waterworks first and foremost. 
Let me just say, Justin, you are going to be a hard act to follow. <laughs> I don't have that energy. <laughs> and reading from a novel gives you a whole different feel. However, as a matter of fact, in um, talking to my son's father today, I realized that 12 years ago today is when I started this book. Wow. Um, my son's father, we were in California on the bar, and he's like, you always got so much to say, you talk so much, why you ain't never wrote a book? Mm. So I'm like, I never thought about it. And at that moment, we started throwing out ideas for the book. Um, I moved back home. I was praying with my son at the time. He passed, and I just quit. I didn't feel it anymore. It wasn't fair and I let it get the best of me. Ironically, six years ago, he came to me in a dream and said, mommy, you gotta finish. So today, I have all these tears and I'm emotional because dude, mommy did it. I finished mm. working. And I'm excited. <laughs> and it was a struggle to get here. My little boo back here, Kyra, Kyla fixed it because it wasn't what I asked for in terms of the... Kayla. Kayla, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It wasn't what I asked for in terms of the cover, but she took it and she did something with it that I could use. The formatting was off. It's just been just such a trial to get here. So I'm super excited about the Dirty Gloves. Of course, this is a Detroit-based book. And... With not as much enthusiasm as Justin, <laughs> I'm going to give you a couple excerpts from a couple different chapters from some of the characters, and um, there's going to be some cursing, so let's close the baby's ears. <laughs> um, then you got the duo, Shame and Lowe's, they're red light specialists. Huh. It looks as though my name in the game about to go big. If not often, we niggas from 8 Mile get to... Get, to, get a call to take one of the most notorious names in the game. Mm. And although it's nothing personal, it will help my credentials and my pockets see things that neither one have ever seen. Check this shit out. I get this mysterious call asking me if I want to make a few hundred thousand dollars and a hood rich nigga like me was all in. He then proceeds to tell me that he's done his homework on me and my crew and he feels like we'd be the best ones for the job considering who our market's going to be. He also told me that this is a personal job and not business. I had to correct him and let him know. It's always going to be business for me, never personal. When it comes to making money, it could be my mama with a ticket on her head. If it's enough, I'll take her ass out too. There's nobody that is immune to getting got if the price is right. I'm a dirty ass nigga, and the bad part is I know, and I don't really give a fuck. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they, they grind. Times a lot, and the people do ask me, because I do have a lot of characters, and a lot of people ask me, you know, where do I get these characters from? A lot of times there are people I meet, and since I've been a scribe all my life, when I'm talking to people, I'm automatically picking up faults, picking up little signs or things that makes you a human. And then I take all that and put it inside this character. And that's who she becomes. So a lot of people will walk up to me and be like, oh my God, this person was me. Or this sounds just like this. I've had people walk up to me and say, that was my story. You told it word for word. And it's like, oh my God. <laughs> I'm sorry to happen to you. <laughs> but um, I think that God has just made me a vessel of... If the story died and was in the graveyard, I was given the power to tell that story for that person. Or if that person had a problem, she can't tell her story or he can't tell his story, then I'm given that power to give that story to everybody. Because everybody has a story to tell. Everybody's gone through a, a journey to find their beautiful self. I said, hey, might as well do it. Make some money off of it, right? <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> so, chapter one. Madison, oh, I'm getting old. I'm sorry. I'm acting like I'm young. <laughs> okay, Madison stayed mostly to herself, but Nikki Powers had been her best friend since junior high. Since Madison had moved to the west side of Detroit, Nikki occasionally came from the suburbs where Madison used to live with her mother. Her father gave Nikki the suspect eye as he allowed her in his house. A man of the church, he looked over his daughter, 
I thought you had a lot of studying to do tonight. We do, Nikki said in Madison's defense. Mr. Dow, your kind daughter is helping you with my final thesis. Her father looked hard at Nikki. I would like a private word with you, Nikki Powers, before you corrupt my daughter in my study. He looked up at Madison. I'll send her upstairs when I'm done, Madison. Stop telling the story. <laughs> I can hear her. <laughs> Madison was very worried. It wasn't the first time her father had wanted a private word with Nikki. Nikki looked at, Matt, at Madison at the top of the stairs. Don't worry, Maddie. He'll just preach to me about not corrupting his daughter once again. She winked at her to assure her friend things will be fine. Madison relaxed and watched Nikki go into her father's study. Instead of going into her bedroom, she waited in the hallway. And in 20 minutes, Nikki came bounding out of the office and up the stairs. She grabbed Madison's hand and dragged her to the bedroom to ensconce themselves inside. Why do we even move here, Nikki said annoyed. He treats you like a child. You're three years shy of 30. He's a pastor, Madison said proudly in her father's defense. Nikki cruelly corrected her, an assistant pastor, Maddie, and he's a control freak. He wants to punish you because he's angry at your mother for leaving him. She snorted, I need to use your bathroom. She closed the door before Madison could say anything. Taking a moment to push away Nikki's cruel words about her father, Madison wasn't going to discuss how she needed to stay with him because she was broke, trying to finish her master's, unlike Nikki, who was practically supported by her semi-wealthy parents, who brought everything and anything for their only daughter. Cyrus had made it difficult for anyone to come see Madison because he didn't want his, her mother's people in his house. Nikki was about the only one who, who was allowed in the home, but always had to be preached about corrupting his daughter. Madison knew once her project was accepted and the grant given, her days of living in this place would be over. She'd be able to step out on faith on her lifelong research and be able to do things on her own. Time was just going very slow and painful. Yeah. They, and they're like, wow.